Okay, what's up guys? Sean from Team Xbox over here over at Microsoft. I just personally purchased the Pro X. So we're gonna unbox this today. I'm not with the Surface team. I'm not with the marketing team. So these views and impressions, they're strictly my own. This just represents the future of the Surface Pro line. And I'm so excited because a lot of the innovations in the hardware and the style of the keyboard, Windows on ARM, these are all movements to put Windows on new form factors and ultimately seeing which one's best for you. Nice, beautiful, simple packaging. We have the base version that runs at $9.99. Let's open this up. Cameras here and your stereo mics. So you have your Windows Hello, your standard front-facing webcam, USB-C, two of them for this device. The USB-A was included with the Surface Pro 7, volume rocker, power button, and the Surface charging port. Lift this up. Now the Surface Pro X only comes currently in the black color. So we'll see how this is lined and see if we can scratch it or not. And my God, the first impressions are this thing is pretty light. It's definitely an improvement over the standard Surface line. For reference, we have the Surface Pro 7 over here and you can see immediate differences. The difference right there, the Surface Pro X is much thinner a little taller and the port differences so you have the USB-C on the Pro 7 the USB-A this charging port on this side all you have is a volume rocker and a surface adapter on this side and on your left side there's only the headphone jack for the Pro 7 and if, if you look closely you have two USB-C's on this side there's no headphone jack on the Pro X. Standard kickstand, you've seen this since Surface Pro 4, 5, 6, and 7 and it's a completely different hinge and I'm noticing that, let's see which one goes farther down. About the same in terms of how far down they can go. So the hinge design has been redone. Not one, but two screws for the Surface Pro 7. And they must have redesigned the hinge because it's a different chassis for this type of device. This has a micro SD card slot. The Surface Pro X doesn't have in that corner, but you do have this pin eject tool area where you can replace the SSD. One of the um, older generations, iPad Pro 12, inch so it's the largest ipad screen real estate this pro x here has the same size screen with smaller bezels we're going to compare this to the newest ipad pro but that kind of gives you a reference that this is the type the form factor that we're aiming for this being the ipad and this being the surface pro x over here so pretty impressive that we're getting this form factor look how thin both of them are me the surface Pro X is just a touch just a touch wider but you're running windows on arm now i say full windows on arm but we know that some apps aren't completely compatible um, on windows on arm and you're running windows on a mobile chip so you're going to have some of those mobile limitations this is a 65 watt charging cable so the pro 7 uh, the surface laptop 3 and the pro x over here are running the same power brick so if you happen to have all three like i do then you can use the same power brick. Our user manuals over here about the Surface Pro X. Surface Pro X signature keyboard and slim pen. Now note, you don't have to get the pen bundle. You can just get the keyboard by itself. Notice that there's this nice little foam layer to protect the pen. One tab to lift up. I love Surface's packaging. Which keyboard do you think is the Pro 7 versus the Pro X? Well, you can't really tell until you go down here and you look at how this is for the Surface Pro 7 and how the Pro X, how that has changed, okay? Because this is a thinner Pro series line and you have to adapt for the charging for your slim pen. Huge magnet over here that can connect right to the lip of the Pro 7. And for the Pro X over here, you only have magnets on this side and on this side, this will be charging for the pen. Other than that, it's the same keyboard. They're both Alcantara. This is the traditional Surface Pro 7 pen, and this is the Surface Pro X. You notice that the Pro X pen is much thinner, but they still have this eraser key over here that corresponds to this key. They're the same, um, and the pen tips, it's a little redesigned right there, and this pen tip looks a little different. This is more sketchy, but I feel like it's a combination of a different style of drawing or pen, but also making it thinner, so you kind of get the best of both worlds. Now, there's no way to store the pen on this device rather than inside the keyboard, which is better because it's actually safer inside the keyboard. But notice there are magnets on the backside 
of this device right here. Um, and I think that's mainly just to attach it to the keyboard. So you can put the pen here, but that's unofficial. Don't do that. That's just for this connection. Let's connect the keyboard. There you go, I'll do it again. Nice and flush. Okay, now, differences. Because the magnets and the pen are there, it's not as strong as a kind of flush connection. You notice that the lip is actually smaller too. So it's a smaller surface area and there's less magnets on the keyboard to connect, but it'll still go right up to the edge of the keyboard. Connect that and it's a more tighter flush finish. So like I said, for the Pro 7 review, if it's not broken, don't fix it. That magnetic piece right there on the surface line actually made it a little tougher to connect and detach, which I like. Over here, it's not as tight, but it's tight enough. And let's set this guy up. The United States, is that right? Yes. Want to stick with that? Yes. Look at this cellular option with Surface Pro with LTE. surface pin eject tool, put it in, and it just ejects. And this should give us access to the SSD. So 128 gigabytes custom SSD um, that you can increase storage. So there's no a micro SD slot for you. And this is where you can input your SIM card. You put this little pin in and it opens that knob up to push off this metal tray. Marie, let's see if we put this back and just pops in flush just like that. Say you're reprovisioning this device and you want to completely destroy the hard drive or the storage, there you go, you can take that out, put, give this device to someone else and completely destroy this piece instead of having to destroy the entire unit. Our cellular settings, here we have a mobile phone number. This is a full line with data access, but you have two options, cellular or you have SIM one, and then we just looked at that SIM tray. Go online with cellular data, gig sky, this is a little tricky for me. Okay, I've got it. Bring that right inside there. Hey, cellular connected, AT&T, it works. And then let's turn off Wi-Fi. What happens when I call? Not available. Please try again later. Good evening. So it's unavailable. I can't make calls. I can only use data. Okay, let's turn this all the way up. I would say that runs pretty loud. Both impressive speaker output on this, but the Surface Pro X seems to run louder. Let's see how bright this screen brightness is. Now you tell me which one you think is brighter. Looking to me like they're pretty similar in terms of nits, but uh, this Surface Pro X looks a touch brighter to me. Mm -hmm. uh, a little late to the game, but let's go see what this is. Those speakers are really loud and they're coming from here. If you look on both sides, you have the speaker grills. So that's really loud. This is very loud. So if you swipe from the left, that's multitasking. Swipe from the right gives you this notification dock. Swiping from the bottom or from the top doesn't do anything. We're going to test the pen. And if you look at the pen closely, it has this white light indicator showing you that it's charged. Easy to take out. Once I take it out, it says welcome to the Surface Pen. So let's go ahead and get that set up. I'm right-handed. And let's launch Microsoft Whiteboard next and it works great with Office. And let's see what this button does. And that should open up the draw shape to create a snip. So let's uh, do that. And we've snipped that and that's slipped to our keyboard. And now here we have it, we have this layer where we can kind of draw on it. So that, and I want to erase what I wrote. So it's an erase. You don't even have to click all the way down. Pen pressure feels fine. And just for our testing, this original, Surface Pen should work too, and just like that it does. Well, the pen works with probably the Entrick technology, but this pen isn't Bluetooth set up, so it'll only work for the Surface Pro 7 that we have. I feel like the silence brings in a lot of confusion. Like, can you run all your apps on here? When you're running with this device, things that are optimized for the ARM chip are native apps. So Edge, Office 365, one of my feedback for the team is I wonder why it's so confusing or why there isn't so much documentation on what the limitations are of this device. So either you're hiding the limitations of it, hoping that people understand this is Windows on ARM, 
or you're embracing that there are limitations and if you could educate consumers, then that's great. That way I know that this is a browsing emo Office 365 type of work machine that's always connected and mobile on the go. Talking to the store reps, they said that 95% users just web browse and do office docs and send emails and don't run these intensive apps. This is not a gaming centric device. It has an integrated graphics card. It's not going to run, um, say these intensive games like Outer Worlds or Gears 5. UWP apps work best in this native environment. So you're still gonna have all these types of app supports. Um, you have Netflix and Spotify, Instagram, iTunes, and it's best to optimize to get your apps from the Windows Store over here. Main things like email and web browsing and Office Suite for, say, tech CEOs or corporate workers, you're going to stick to your Office Suite, which it has everything here. The OneNote, Outlook, Excel, PowerPoint, OneDrive. Use Edge if you want the optimal kind of power management process, although you can download Chrome. It won't be able to run Steam games completely. You're going to have to download Steam for yourself. Trial and error phase and Creative Cloud just um, won't work because that's a 64-bit architecture. Some of your apps are going to run on emulation, namely the heavy intensive ones can emulate and run on here. It's still pure Windows. You'll just find some hiccups are in Steam running games and Adobe Creative Suite are really intensive processes like running Premiere Pro. Now I have to download and do that testing for myself. Really solid build. What a fantastic design. And just holding this, this is super light. I highly prefer the style and beauty of this device here because man, it's so thin. It's thinner bezels. It's a larger screen than the Surface Pro 7. The pen style, I'm not going to lose that where I might lose this one here. Build quality is a 10 out of 10 on this. The fast charge getting up to 80% in an hour, about 50% in 30 minutes. A replaceable and destroyable SSD in case I ever give this device away or just need a new SSD that you can install in there. The LTE connectivity, having always on. Would you rather work on Office on this or would you rather work on Office on an iPad or Google Sheets, for example, or any productivity apps on Chrome OS or the iPad OS? Well, I'd rather work on it on full Windows. So that's our overview of the Pro X. Let me know what you guys mainly use um, your two-in-one tablets below. Would you use this as your go-to device? Okay guys, that serves as our unboxing today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what device you want to use below in the Pro X family. We're going to do a surface breakdown of which one's great for you and a full review of this device shortly. So thank you so much. Hope this review helps you and let's welcome all the launches for the Surface line. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Okay, bye guys.